Welcome to Radiology Defined. Today we'll be learning about skull base foramina. I'll be showing on CT head. And what we'll be doing is first we will see the scrolling of the DICOM images. I will show you foramen on axial and coronal. Later I will explain the contents going through each foramen point wise by writing. So we'll be going anterior to cra uh, posterior cranial fossa and also cranial nerve wise. So first this pointy structure you can see is the crista galli. Locate the structure and move down. Trace the crista galli. And as you move down it will be attached to the cribriform plate. And these two fossae you can see the right and left adjacent to crista galli. I'll show it to you on coronal. So these two are the olfactory fossa. And these are the cribriform plate at the base of it which will be perforated for the neural rootlets to come. And this is crista galli. They have olfactory bulb and rootlets will come through the perforated cribriform plate to take the sensation of smell from the nose. So olfactory fossa has olfactory bulb and rootlets as I told you that's the major and only content. Next we have optic canal. So for this first locate the globe here and posterior to the globe you can see this this is the optic nerve and it passes through a bony canal posteriorly that bony canal is the optic canal so here you can see optic nerve passing through the bony canal later to form chiasma behind it so on coronal if you see it here you can see these two are the optic canal and as you come forward you can trace it down from the globe. This is the globe. Move backwards posteriorly here you can see the optic nerve and as you trace it posteriorly it passes through the optic canal that is the optic canal adjacent to the Spinoid sinus. This is the spinoid sinus. Adjacent to it you can see optic canal. Contents of optic canal, optic nerve and ophthalmic artery. It also has sympathetic plexus along the ophthalmic artery. Next we have superior orbital fissure. So you know optic canal is here and you can see another foramen here near the optic canal. So this is the greater wing of sphenoid and this is the anterior clenoid process of lesser wing of sphenoid. So between those two bone you have superior orbital fissure here as you can trace and on coronal this is the superior orbital fissure and that was the optic canal here optic canal is there and this is the superior orbital fissure. It has very important structures passing through it and the structures passing through superior orbital fissure was a first year anatomy question if you remember uh, this oculomotor nerve which is third cranial nerve this trochlear nerve which is fourth cranial nerve next we have ophthalmic nerve which is the first segment of fifth cranial nerve that is trigeminal nerve v1 we call it v1 or 5 1 and there are branches of ophthalmic nerve that is lacrimal branch, frontal branch and nasociliary branches running through superior orbital fissure. Then there is abducens nerve which is 6th cranial nerve. So 3, 4, 5 and 6 run through it. Only first segment of 5th nerve runs here. Remember that. So uh, there are vascular structures also that is superior ophthalmic vein passes through it. Inferior ophthalmic vein passes through it. Next we have recurrent branch of lacrimal artery passing through this. So these are the neural structures or the nerves 3, 4, 5, 6 and these are the vascular structures. The other parts of trigeminal nerve that is second and third segment we will be discussing in the next few foramina. Next we have inferior orbital fissure. Now we knew optic canal and superior orbital fissure. Go down you can see this projection posterior to the orbit. This is the 
inferior orbital fissure on coronal here you can see that is the inferior orbital fissure that joins the pterygo palatine fossa which is a pyramidal shaped structure behind the maxillary sinuses very important and uh, this is the inferior orbital fissure we'll discuss the contents we have inferior orbital nerve and zygomatic nerve passing through this they are the branches of second part of fifth cranial nerve they are the branches of second division of trigeminal nerve next we have infraorbital artery and vein next inferior ophthalmic vein passing through this these are the nerves and these are the vascular structures next foramen we have foramen rotundum that was the inferior orbital fissure as you move down you can see pterygo palatine fossa just posterior to the pterygo palatine fossa here i am bringing the cursor this is the foramen rotundum remember sphenoid sinus is there adjacent to sphenoid sinus both sides you will see foramen rotundum and it also joins pterygo palatine fossa here you can see foramen rotundum on coronal they are the round shaped structures adjacent to the sphenoid sinus this is the sphenoid sinus and foramen rotundum is adjacent to it bilaterally very well defined they run anterior to posterior that was the optic canal and superior orbital fissure this is the foramen rotundum it runs anterior to posterior as i told so on coronal you can see the cut section as circular what are the contents of foramen rotundum we have important structures that is the maxillary nerve which is a branch of trigeminal nerve that is the second uh, segment of trigeminal nerve we have artery of foramen rotundum easy to remember and we have emissary veins running through it so the nerve is second branch of trigeminal and vascular structures are these next we have vidian canal that is the foramen rotundum which i am showing now don't get confused with the vidian canal i'll show you the vidian canal this is sphenoid sinus and you move down the sphenoid sinus you can see this another canal similar to foramen rotundum this is the vidian canal it almost comes after the sphenoid sinus ends okay so the this is the vidian canal here another easy way to remember this is it comes at the end of sphenoid sinus below the sphenoid sinus so this is the vidian canal here and on right side you can see vidian canal here is almost into the sphenoid sinus so this was foramen rotundum which i showed you that time don't get confused this is the vidian canal vidian canal is almost at the at the base of the sphenoid sinus and foramen rotundum was adjacent to the sphenoid sinus so pterygoid plate you locate and above the pterygoid plate you will have these vidian canal that also joins the pterygo palatine fossa and another way to remember it is you can see here this is the carotid canal where carotid artery gives a vidian artery branch so you can always see the vidian canal connecting to the carotid canal so that's how you can locate vidian canal so the structures running through it are vidian nerve and vidian artery which is a branch of carotid artery as we discussed internal carotid artery now that we have seen vidian canal i'll show again vidian canal yes next we'll move on to foramen ovale so that was the carotid uh, canal and vidian canal this is the foramen ovale here it is a oval shaped foramen as the name suggests this is the opposite side and on coronal it is very well seen this is the foramen ovale on coronal images contents there is a mnemonic if you remember that is male structures pass through it m for mandibular nerve which is a third part or third segment of trigeminal nerve a for accessory meningeal artery which supplies the dura 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव एल फॉर लेसर पीट्रोसल नर्व ई फॉर एमिसरी वेन्स एम ए एल ई नेक्स्ट अडजेंट टू द फोरामिन ओवेल वी हैव द स्मॉल फोरामिन हियर दैट इज द फोरामिन स्पाइनोसम इट इज ऑल्सो इजिली लोकेटेड इफ यू सी द फोरामिन ओवेल अडजेंट टू इट दिस द स्मॉल फोरामिन कॉल्ड फोरामिन स्पाइनोसम दिस इज हाउ इट इज सीन ऑन द coronal images i'll show you both sides this is a small foramen not as wide as the foramen oval i'll scroll back and show you this is the foramen oval which is wide and very well visualized and then just move a little posteriorly you can see foramen spinosum yes that was right this is the left foramen spinosum it has meningeal artery which supplies the dura going through it so main structure most important is the middle meningeal artery and vein it also has meningeal branch of the mandibular nerve passing through it that is a branch of third segment of trigeminal nerve so these are the vascular and neural structures through foramen spinosum so we already so for i am an oval spinosum carotid canal also we saw we'll discuss little in detail it is easy to locate because it's very well evident here you can see some lacerated type of appearance of the bone at the end of carotid canal that is the foramen lacerum as the name suggests and there there is foramen rotundum there as we move down you can see carotid canal forming carotid foramen through which internal carotid artery enters the skull and as we move up it goes through the body of sphenoid and then ends here where carotid arteries go through the cavernous sinus so these are the carotid canals and on coronal you can see these are the carotid canals it almost passes through it passes within the body of sphenoid and here you can see the carotid foramen where internal carotid artery comes this is the carotid canal and here it passes through the cavernous sinus contents easy to remember internal carotid artery obviously and sympathetic plexus along the internal carotid artery also passes through this carotid canal we saw these are the carotid canals next we'll discuss internal acoustic meatus so these are the internal acoustic meatus is connecting the inner ear this is the inner ear cochlea this is the vestibule these are the semicircular canals and this is the internal acoustic meatus and internal acoustic canal on coronal this is how the internal acoustic canal looks like there are 7th and 8th cranial nerves passing to the inner ear to innervate it we'll see that and it's easy to locate so 7th and 8th cranial nerve as i told you facial nerve and vestibulo cochlear nerve passes through it there is labyrinthine artery passing through this internal so the cross section of internal auditory canal i'll take it's divided horizontally by falciform crest and the superior portion is divided into anterior and posterior by bills bar so this is the anterior end and posterior end anterior end we have a mnemonic that is seven up and coke down that means seventh nerve passing in the superior portion that is facial nerve next we have cochlear nerve passing down coke down we have vestibular nerve left so vestibular nerve has two parts superior vestibular nerve passes superiorly inferior vestibular nerve passes inferiorly so this is facial nerve and vestibulo cochlear nerve complex passing through the internal auditory canal after this we have facial nerve this is the facial nerve the thin portion which i am showing that is the genu this is the horizontal part on facial canal and this is the facial nerve here it's very thin 
now there is second genu and we will move down so it moves horizontally down to exit out the skull through stylomastoid foramen it is called stylomastoid foramen because there is styloid process here and mastoid bone here so this is stylomastoid foramen this is the facial nerve the horizontal portion so it contains facial nerve and stylomastoid artery as contents the stylomastoid foramen and this is styloid process and mastoid bone i have done a detailed video of facial nerve on hrct temporal bone it's on my page you can go check it out there is full facial nerve course in detail next here we have this is the jugular foramen the bulbous foramen in the posterior cranial fossa here this is on the opposite side on coronal this is how it is, is how it is seen it has two parts anterior part and posterior part divided by this bony prominence called jugular spine this is pars nervosa and this is pars vascularis they are named so because of the structures passing through it and as we see in coronal this is where the jugular vein enters the neck and this is the jugular foramen so the contents depends on the part there is pars nervosa anteriorly pars vascularis posteriorly pars vascularis has the main jugular bulb and it exits the skull through this there is pars nervosa in which the cranial nerves pass so we have covered till the 8th cranial nerve rest of it 9 10 11 passes through jugular foramen there is glossopharyngeal nerve which is 9th vagus 10th nerve and accessory nerve which is 11th nerve next we have hypoglossal canal this is on either side of the clivus easy to identify bilaterally on either side of clivus we have hypoglossal canal and this is eagle shaped bony structure within which we have hypoglossal canal these bony structures are occipital condyles and through which you can see hypoglossal canal here so these are the occipital condyles and these are the hypoglossal canal contents as the name suggests there is hypoglossal nerve that is the last cranial nerve and there is also meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery passing through this foramen the last foramen we have very obvious foramen it is a foramen magnum this is the foramen magnum at the base of the skull and it, this is on coronal you know what foramen magnum contains it is a cranio vertebral junction it contains medulla oblongata and then continues to form the spinal cord and we'll discuss in detail about the contents of foramen magnum so foramen magnum has medulla oblongata continuing to form spinal cord and then it has spinal root of accessory nerve you know 11th cranial nerve has two roots spinal accessory nerve has spinal root which comes through foramen magnum and exits through jugular foramen after joining the accessory part next we have vertebral artery coming up through foramen magnum spinal artery is going down through foramen magnum these were the foramens of cranial fossa on ct i have discussed how to identify on axial coronal plane also what structures pass through it uh, use this video play it and watch it simultaneously by scrolling the dicom images so that you can learn side by side locate them and you will never forget the foramina once you'll start identifying on each case thank you for watching please like comment and share this video